morning, everybody. Good morning, church. There is something that God promised us, and that is heaven on earth. So I just want somebody, just one person, who wants to have heaven on earth. Just raise your hands and wave it on the Jehovah. Because something is moving. Something is happening in the atmosphere. The grace of the Almighty is descending. And we are heaven. 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 On earth. Heaven. Heaven. On earth. Oh. Oh. empowering the kingdom of the Lord is within me and he's calling me to the heavenly yes yeah. in heavenly places just like heaven just like heaven on earth to be walking in his favor and grace just like heaven Spirit of unity to our community, show his ability. The will of the Lord for his children is to demonstrate perpetuate. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we are grateful unto you. It's a new day. It's a new season. We honor you, Jehovah. We thank you for who you are. Thank you because you are God and you are God forever. Thank you for being God to us in Four Square Gospel Church at Socorro. Thank you for ruling and reigning. We give you all the glory. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Let it bring forth fruit that will abide forever. Thank you, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Please help me welcome your neighbor. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Welcome to church this morning. Hallelujah. Something is moving. Something is shifting. I can see his glory. And it's like heaven on earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the ruler of the universe, the mighty God of Israel, the one that opens and no man can shut, the one that shuts and no man can open, the creator, the miracle worker, the one that does excellent things, the one that heals us, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shekui, Jehovah El Shaddai, mighty God of Israel. Alagbada ino, adagba maparo ye. Olorun awon baba wa, oba ti o wa lano, oba ti o wa loni, oba to wa titi lai lai, ato farati, ato gbekele, oba ti ki dojuti ni, oba ti wa pelu wa ninu ijowo, ninu ijogbo, ninu wahala, to yo wa kuro bi omo. Hallelujah. This God rules in the affairs of men. This month has been declared the month of the king. Even if it is just one verse of this song, I'd like us to take it together. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Just to one verse, just the first verse. And please do it. Sing from anywhere. You don't need to come up the altar. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate forth. Let angels prostrate forth. Lead forth the understand this is not part of the message at all but what the lord has told me to do as i just stepped into this place crown him lord of all in nigeria 
We crown him this week. We crown the King of Kings as the Lord of all in Nigeria. Let's take it again. If that's all we will do, we'll stop at that. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let it just prostrate for. Let it just prostrate for. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him. Can you lift up your voice unto God and crown Jesus Lord of all? One person, one person, lift up your voice. Legebo Shanderebo Sinta. Leima Santerebo Kuribo Shinta. Bring him. Magabo Shanterebo Sinta. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Go on. Um, Domingo. I want you to crown the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I want you to pray for there, Pastor Domingo. Brother Domingo, pray from there and crown him Lord of all Jehovah in Nigeria. Jehovah God, crown you as the Lord of Lords. The heavens open and the peace of Nigeria come down today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Who is this King of Glory? Who is the King of Glory? The Lord of Hosts. He is the King of Glory. Shout Hallelujah again. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, we are looking at the King, my Father. Is coming for me. The king, my father, he is coming for me. Matthew 25. I'll be reading from verse 1 to 12. Matthew 25. I'm reading about the story of the virgins. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. We took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, not so, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Verse 11. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, 
Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. I'm going to be reading a story. I encountered this story a long time ago, and then my husband brought it to my attention again. It's a story of um, Armenia earthquake. There was an earthquake in Armenia in 1989, and the promise of an earthly father. Please listen to me. Just follow me. Some of you may know about this story. It's a life story. It's a true story. It had to do with the 8.2 earthquake that struck Armenia back in 1989 when the country was flattened, killing over 30,000 people in less than four minutes. Whether the incident took place in Gumri or Spitak remains to be seen. Those were the areas that took the brunt of the loss. In the midst of utter devastation and chaos, a father left his wife securely at home and rushed to the school where his son was supposed to be, only to discover that the building had been flattened as a pancake. After the traumatic initial shock, this man remembered the promise he had made to his son. No matter what, I'll always be there for you. And tears began to fill his eyes as he looked at the pile of debris that once was the school. He looked hopeless, but he kept remembering his commitment to his son. He began to concentrate on where he walked his son to school each morning, remembering his son's classroom, will be in the back right corner of the building. He rushed there and started digging through the rubble. As he was digging, other fallen parents arrived, clutching their hearts, saying, my son, my daughter. Other well-meaning parents tried pulling off what was left of the school, saying, it's too late. They are dead. You can't help. Go home. Come on, face reality. There's nothing you can do. You are just going to make things worse. To each parent, he responded with one line. Are you going to help me now? And then he proceeded to dig for his son, stone by stone. The Bible makes us to understand that there was a stone that followed the children of Israel. There was a rock that followed them. Everywhere they went in the wilderness, it followed them. And he said that that rock is Jesus. The fire... The fire chief showed up and tried to pull him off the school's debris. This is a life story I'm saying. Saying, fires are breaking out. Explosions are happening everywhere. You are in danger. We'll take care of it. Please go home. To which this loving, caring, Armenian father asked, Are you going to help me now? The police came and said, You are angry, distraught, and it's over. You are endangering others. We'll take care of it. Go home. No one helped. Courageously, he proceeded alone because he needed to know for himself, is my boy alive or is he dead? He dug for eight hours, 12 hours, 24 and 36 hours. Then in the 38th hour, he pulled back a boulder and heard his son's voice. The man screamed his son's name, Amandi! He heard his father and said, Dad, it's me. Dad, I told the other kids not to worry. I told them that if you are alive, you will save me. And when you save me, they'll be saved. You promise. You promised, Dad, no matter what, I'll always be there for you. And you did it, Dad. There are 14 of us left out of 33. Dad, we are scared, hungry, thirsty, and thankful you are here. When the building collapsed, he made a wedge, like a triangle, and he saved us. Come on out, boy. He said, no, Dad. Let the other kids come out first. 
because I know you will get me. No matter what, I know you'll be there for me. As it was for Amandi in 1989, so it is for you today in 2019 in Nigeria. I'm sure, my father, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, he will come for me. He will come for me. Let me just make uh, his position known. Because what I'm talking about today is like we have left it. We don't go there anymore. I asked the Lord this morning, why? He said, yes, we are going back to the basics. We are going back to the beginning. And he was talking to me. And I believe he was talking to us as a church. He said, he's coming back. He's very sure that he is going to come back. Our concentration has not been on the fact that he said he will come back. He said, I will come back. Behold, I come quickly. And his word is yea and amen. He said, I will come back. Are we preparing for his coming back? The things that we do, do they present as people that are waiting for their father? In the midst of the rubble, in the midst of the trouble, in the midst of all the chaos that we have in Nigeria and all over the world, are you waiting that what he said he would do, that he's able to do it? Number two is that he said he would be coming for his saints. He's coming for his own. You must be able to understand his voice and his language. Every sign that we need to have is on ground. Everything that you need to know, you should know by now. So many things that they are strange even to our normal culture. But they are like normal life to us right now. Are you a saint of God? Are you a child of God? When we first met him, what I know we used to do, the moment you give your life to Christ, the next thing is we put our Bibles under our shoulder and we begin to go around trying to preach the word. We want to establish the fact that we are children of God. We sing, we are a new creation. We are new people. New, all things are passed away. All things have become new. Are we talking about newness of life anymore? The God of all the earth that is greater than Amadi's father has asked me to ask you, are you a saint of God? Are you a child of God? It's unfortunate that I will use this example because I know that God just wanted to confirm what he was saying to me this morning, that things have shifted totally. Things have changed totally. I don't know where we found it, that a Christian, a child of God, will fill a form and they will ask you, how old are you? You are 45 and you are feeling that you are 35. Even if you cut it, instead of saying 45 and you say 40, ah, ah, it is strange to me, but it is a lie. And people say that that is a normal thing. Is it normal? For the saints of God, it is not normal. It is not normal. And that means that is what we are doing. The man that is coming, the king that is coming, is not coming for that kind of a church. He's not coming for saints that are stealing. He says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Does the king know your voice? Does the father know your voice? When you cry to him, does he know that you are the one that is speaking? When you are under the rubble,
Can you actually cry out and say, I know my father will come for me. And because he will come for me, I will stay where he asked me to stay. I will just stay there. It doesn't matter what every other person is saying out there. I'm going to stay there. And as many of you that are around me that are willing to stay, wait, my father is coming. Out of 33, 14 were left. All others, either they are struggling or whatever it is that they are doing, they've gone. And of, uh, 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 as is expected, they pass. In the midst of the saints in the land, can you be identified as a saint? I speak to you, I speak to myself. Because first and foremost, when a word comes, I first of all treat it with myself. It has to be medicine to my soul, first and foremost, before it can bear fruit in your life. And then he says it will come suddenly. The third thing is that he said it will come suddenly. He's sure that it will come. And he's coming for saints. I don't know how many saints he will find. We counsel young people that want to get married. Very few would you find children of, of Christians. Very few would you find that you find them as virgins. They say, yes, we have fixed the wedding, so we are, we are like married. We are like married. And when you say things like that, ah, it's like, what is the problem? Hallelujah. He says it will come suddenly. The, the story of the ten virgins, they're like all of us that come here every Sunday. We dress up and we come to church. But only the God of heaven knows where and where we've been and what, and what we've been up to. And heaven is crying out because the time is short. The time is very short. I sat in my office just last week. And I was there and somebody that I didn't know him too well, but very known to my husband. He came, we were discussing some very good projects that he has on. And I said, yes, we must partner with you. This is fantastic. This is a good job. A lot of research had been done. He had done so much on his computers. He had done so much. He has covered many states of this federation. And I said, yes, at least the ones you have done, let's work on that. Let's harvest that. Let's utilize that. So bring the papers. By Monday, by Monday, say by Monday, bring the papers. We will have a look at them. I didn't know what he had to do. Just there, on his way in Kogi, some kidnappers. I think they attacked him. And it's not just picking him up, they killed him. They killed him. All those things died with him. Somebody that American embassy, the American government had spent so much.